This is The Wandering Ruins of the Lost Realm. I've pre-ordered a print copy, but with international shipping as it is, I'm not sure when this will arrive. So I'm showing and reviewing the PDF, which I've already got. Because after my, let's say, mixed review of the One Ring Second Edition Core Rules, I wanted to see if this book can elevate some of my criticism on the Core Rules. So let's dig in and see if that is the case. We've got a lot of stuff in here. For one, there's a map of Tharbot on the inside cover and on the inside back cover there is a hex map of the land of Ariador and some of the new adventure sites are marked in here. I don't think all of them are. Some you can put uh, wherever you choose as a DM. The first chapter, Fog over Ariador, once again, beautiful illustrations in this book. Give us a number of uh, regions or of important locations, like the city of Tarbat, which can be used uh, as a plot location, as a safe haven, as a base of operations, as a home base. And the interesting thing about the city of Tharbat is that it was flooded long ago and this is mostly abandoned. But now they have a new ruler, a former bandit, and the fate of the city is completely open. You can base your adventures around here and have the players come back in here and influence the development of the city throughout your campaign. So maybe the Great Bridge of Tharbot will be rebuilt and trade will resume and the city will prosper. Or maybe it will completely sink into the waters, be overrun by dark hordes and be abandoned for good. And I like this site especially because it is a nice alternative to the well-established home bases like Bree or Rivendell because it has a different feel to it. It is more shady, there are more shades of grey and the PC's action can influence the fate of the city throughout your campaign. I think that is a very interesting aspect. Furthermore, we've got the Swan Fleet, which is a fairy-like land of marshes and speaking otters. Very brief description here. We've got the port town of Lond Dare, the dwarf holds of Harmlet, the ruins of Cardolan, Erin Vaughan, and the lone lands of Minhiriath. So a bit more description of land and people and rumors and NPCs you can use in your campaign. I especially like, as I said, the city of Tharbad. Chapter 2. A Gathering Storm. Once again, this is a cool illustration. This is something that was really missing from the core book. These are adventure fronts, if you use uh, Dungeon World or Lazy Dungeon Master terminology. These are threats to the campaign world, to the free people of Eriador. And we've got several. You can use one or some of them, all of them, if you can somehow make that fit. And these are antagonists. These will have their own agendas, their workings, even when the characters are doing something else entirely, they will still act in the background and push their own agenda. And they will get into conflict with the player characters and through that you will have your story, you will have your plot. We've got a number of antagonists here. 
got the black Numenorians. So these are descendants of the first man, but they serve the Eye of Sauron. These are dark people, these are slavers, they are an alliance with orcs, they wield dark magic, and they come on a scouting mission on a, on a galleon. Slave road galleon that would be the most powerful ship of war in the entire region. And these would make for a great antagonist, especially if you have a ranger in the group, because this is the dark side of the ranger. We've got a description of what they are, what they want, where they come from, of their capabilities. We've got a number of key figures, complete with description and stats and everything. And we've also got a timeline. These are the events that can happen, that will happen if the PCs don't interfere with the designs of this faction. And these events stretch over 10 years and have, would have a huge influence on the region of Eriador. For example, the very last one would be the sacking of Tarbat, the city that I like so much, and then it would fall into ruin completely. And all of these different plans could come into conflict with the PCs. If the PCs succeed in thwarting these plans, then the Dark Numenorians will alter their plans accordingly, maybe skip some steps, maybe do something else entirely. It's up to you as a GM using the knowledge of what the faction wants to uh, give them goals and bring them into conflict with the PCs. And we've got several of these factions. We've got the White Hand of Sauron. This is not an outright evil faction at this point in time. Saruman is still an ally of the Free Folk. And he is mostly gathering information and ring lore. He wants to make his own ring of power, or if he can, find the one ring. And he will have his agents searching throughout the lands. And this could also be a quest giver. And we've got the raiders from Dunland. So these are like Viking-like raiders that will pillage towns and take slaves and it's a more straight up martial faction that can be opposed by the PCs. But also they are in league with Solomon the White. So there's room for some political maneuvering here. Then we've got other shadows. These are just briefly mentioned these are like smaller adventure fronts you would have to flesh out yourself, like the Beast of Greyford or the Dream of Moria. This would be an expedition of the dwarves into the city of Moria, which might be an interesting setting for, for a campaign to organize all of that and finally go into the mines and uh, see how you all tragically die at the end. Chapter 3. Landmarks. One of my biggest criticisms was that there was only one landmark and they didn't teach you how to make more. There were no tables and nothing. There are sadly still no random tables and you know how much I like my random tables. But we've got not one, not three, we've got 12 landmarks, all very distinct all with possible events, goals, and on these adventure sites you can come into conflict with the different factions of your campaign. We've got old dwarven mines. We've got white elven towers. We've got a nasty old tree of sorrow. We've got shrouded islands, or oh, islets. <laughs> However, is that pronounced small island, islets, islets, I don't know. We've got an elven refuge. We've got a fortified queen's hall. 
we've got an old battlefield. We've got the famous weather top where rangers come by. We've got, uh, I think this is a wizard's tower on a hill. Got a nasty old mountain of evil. Got an old ruined fortress and a ranger haven. So a big number of adventure sites, all very distinct from one another, all complete with everything you need to run them. So a description of the site and the NPCs that are there, the treasure that can be found. And then what actually happens there, why your PCs go there, what they want, uh, who will oppose them, who will aid them. That depends on your campaign and how you run the game. And this is exactly how I prepare my adventures myself. I prepare locations, I prepare NPCs, but I don't prepare an elaborate story. I don't prepare an elaborate plot. Plot and story for me is what happens when my PCs come into conflict with my NPCs, with my big evil bad guys. And we've got an appendix, got some optional rules in here, just a page, and an errata for the core rulebooks. No first printing is without error, and that goes for the round wing as well. So we've got a two page errata, not too bad. So yeah, the Ron Ring Ruins of the Lost Realm. I like everything that is in here and this elevates a huge portion of my criticism of the core rulebooks. I now know what I would run in this setting. I would run a campaign that is based around the city of Thaba. This would be the home base. And I would use the Black Numenorians as my main antagonistic faction. And then I have 12 adventure sites where the actual conflict can happen. This might not be enough. One thing that this doesn't elevate is that it still does not teach you and give you the tools to make more adventure sites. There's not a lot of help in how to run the game. This is still a game for experienced dungeon masters, I think. So if you want to run this, I suggest to get a few more books that give you the advice and the tools you need to run the game. So my first recommendation would be the return of the lazy dungeon master, which is just great GM advice in general and really teaches you how to efficiently prepare for the game. Then a, a good selection of random tools that helps you get ideas, helps you make adventure sites and NPCs. That could, for example, be the Forbidden Lands, which got excellent tools, or Worlds Without Numbers, which got extensive, excellent tools and random tables to help you make adventure. So yeah, the Ron Ring, Ruins of the Lost Realm, great addition to the system. Thanks for watching and goodbye.